The sound of the parrot screeching and the sound of the nurse screaming in fear startled Nandini and Kandan Marin. Kandan Marin looks back and Kathy gets worried when he knows that Pulvaterayar is coming. A thought arose that he might have overheard what he had said a little while ago, I don't like Puruvataray either. An even more terrifying thought, the thought that he might misjudge Nandini and himself, terrified him. Isn't the trend of those who get married at a young age unique? Why should he be so angry? I don't know what he is going to do. You have to be ready for anything. So many thoughts flooded Kandan Moran's mind in a split second. But he got a chance to witness a great miracle that day. Contrary to what he thought, the miracle happened. Nandini blushed and looked at him with her black eyes as he approached Palyavatarayar, Natha. I saw that it would be a long day before you come back. Fortunately, you have come. She said. When he saw her face and heard that voice, all the anger of Palyavatare flew away. He melted like wax in the heat. He laughed a strange laugh and said, Yes, the past is over, I am back. Then he looked at Kandan Moran and asked, What is this child doing here? Did he come up with some romantic poem and give it? After hearing that, he laughed at his sarcasm. Kandan Moran's face turned red. But Nandini laughed more than Palyavatarayar and said, He doesn't know love, he doesn't know poetry, he only knows how to fight and get hurt. Fortunately, the injury has healed. He was telling me to go to the city. She said. What is the bravery of the children of this age? I have received 64 wounds in 24 battles. But I have not laid down in bed even once. He has more than one side of his wound healed. But all my wounds were in the chest, shoulder, head, and face. Isn't this child wounded in the back? So it has been so long. He said with a sarcastic smile. Kandan Moran got up in anger and said, Sir. You are in my father's position. So I have accepted your mockery. He said. If not, what would you have done? Asked the reaper and put his hand on the knife in his sheath. Nandini interrupted at this point. Nada. He didn't just have an injury on his back, he had an injury on his chest too. The thought that the man he thought was his friend had stabbed him in the back and left has caused a big wound in his chest. The wound on the back is healing, but the wound on the chest is not. Shouldn't we talk about putting a goal on that wound? Don't they know what happened that night? the night he was hurt, what? Saying that, there must have been something hidden in Nandini's look at Palyavatareya. The look on the villain's face immediately changed. Yes, you are right. Poor, he is an ignorant child. This father is my spiritual friend. I should not care if he said something ignorant. Let it lie. Nandini. I have come now to tell you an important thing. It should be known to him as well. Suspecting a person in Sri Lanka to be one. They have caught him. He has a leaf with Prince Arulmas Hivarman. From the signs, I think he may be a handsome friend of our Kandan Moran. He must be a great handyman. He escaped from being caught by our men and went to Sri Lanka. Said the reaper. The other two did not notice the momentary shift in Nandini's expression. Hey. Has he escaped? Has he gone to Sri Lanka? Kandan Moran said with disappointment. Nada. I find it no wonder that he escaped. How many times have I told them that their brother was unfit to guard this fort? And so will the men he sent. Said Nandini. It didn't make sense to me when you said that before. Now it seems the same to me. Listen to one more strange thing. The one caught in the trap had one of our Pavur symbols. He didn't say how he got it. Nandini let out a light sigh and asked, What's so funny? How did he get the palm leaf? What does their brother say to this? She said. He? You'll laugh if you hear him say it. The old man wants that palm leaf to have gone to him from you. After saying that, Pulvatarayar laughed out loud. Lata Mandapam itself seemed to shake with that laughter. All the trees of the palace were trembling. Nandini laughed along with him and said, 
there is my brother-in-law, there is no one in this world of 7014 who has equal intelligence. She said. Do you know what your brother-in-law is saying? It's funny. I'm laughing to think about it. When you were arriving at the gates of the Tanjore fort, that Indrajito met you and talked to you. Then that Mayavi came into this palace too. So you must have given him the Palyavar letter. If not, you have someone else. The magician comes often, must have gone through him. He makes up all these things to cover up his stupidity. Saying that, Pulvatarayar smiled ha 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 again showing all his long teeth. I was very wrong to doubt my brother-in-law's intelligence. His intellect is full of fire. No doubt. But to think that you have been idle listening to all this. Said Nandini. Her expression changed again, and there was now a burst of anger in it. A spark flew in the eye. Valiant warrior and the brave bearer of many blows on the battlefield, the great Pluvaterayar was unable to bear Nandini's petty anger and stumbled. There was a sudden relaxation in his appearance and speech. Goddess! Do you think I was just listening to all that? I made him cry by talking so harshly about his misbehavior. If you had seen him, you would have felt sorry for him. Said. Kandan Maran Padua who was listening to all this became embarrassed. He felt a little fear of Nandini and pity and contempt for Palyavetare. He wanted to get away from there without getting involved in the matrimonial affairs of these conspirators. He cleared his throat and said, Sir. Nandini interrupted, We forgot about my brother-in-law Samardiya. He says he is going to town, can't we? She asked. Fine. His father must be worried about him staying here so long. I want to give him a straw, can I? Straw? To whom? To the prince in Kanji. Palyavatarayar looked at Nandini and Kandan Maran suspiciously and asked, A letter to the prince? Are you writing? Why? He asked. He has written a letter to Ila Aprati Tambai and sent it to Senakitar. Why not write a letter to Ila Irani Anan of Pavur? Why not write it and send it to him? Said Nandini. Is the paper that this friend brought with him written by the younger Brady Kundave? How did you know that? Asked the reaper. Then why does the sorcerer come to me so often? He knew through his magic. My brother-in-law's people know the symbol. Those who found him to have the palm tree symbol of Palvur and brought it to him did not say that it was sent by Olai Kundeva, look. Our men did not tell us about Lachana, Anbal Brahmariya Ramaswaram has gone and returned. The news he brought. Did that Brahmin tell you about the Kundeva Devi's leaf? No. Nada. Think of what I warned you. Did I not say that so many people in this kingdom are conspiring to deceive you? Do you now see that this is true? I did not believe only what the magician said. I also brought the doctor's son, who had been brought captive from Kadakare, and questioned him. He also confirmed it. The youngest brat said he had sent the straw to his brother. Said Nandini. It was as if the scavengers were blindfolded and left in the forest. He looked at Kandan Marin with disgust. He didn't like talking like this with the little boy by his side. Realizing this, Nandini said, Our story remains. Why delay his journey? After saying that, he looked at Kandan Maran and said, Sir, you must take this leaf directly to the Prince of Kanchi. After giving it, you must send it back with all caution. Do not forget to invite the Prince to your Kadampur Palace. She said, what to say to my father? Can't we say that this is the wish of the king of Palvur? Kandan Maran asked with some hesitation. To put it mildly. My choice is also the king of Palvur's. Nada. I am right. Said Nandini. Yes, yes. The reaper shook his head. He didn't understand anything. Nodding head. He could not even speak against Nandini. After Kandan Maran left, Nandini cast her magnetic eyes on Palyavatarayar and said in a little parrot's voice, Natha, their faith in me seems to have lost. 
It seems that my brother-in-law's stubbornness has been conquered. She said. Nandini, never. Even if I lose faith in the sword in my hand and the sword in the middle, I will not lose faith in you. Even if I lose faith in the hero's heaven, I will not lose faith in your words. Said. If this is true, why did you ask me so many questions with that little boy? I was ashamed. When Nandini said that, Tears began to well up in her eyes. The scavenger sputtered. No, my dear. Like this. Don't punish me. Saying that, he wiped the tears from Nandini's eyes and pacified her. But some of your things don't make sense to me. Don't I have the right to ask what, what, why? Said. They have the right to ask. I also have the right to say. Who said no? I only told you not to ask in front of strangers. Ask now what you want. She said. Why are you sending a straw to Adithakari Kalan? Why are you asking him to be invited to the Kadampur mansion? Isn't he the first enemy to the realization of our idea? Said the Reaper. No, no. Adithakari Kalan is not our first enemy. That old snake woman is our first enemy. Why did I invite her to our palace? It is for that reason that I am asking Aditha Kari Kalan to come to Kadapur. Nada. Now remember what I have often said. The younger Prati Kuntave is his did I not tell you that she had some special idea in her mind? Now I have found out what it is. She is determined to put her younger brother Arulmas Hivarman on the throne of Tanjavur to the exclusion of all others. To counter-inspire her and thwart her purpose. Don't you now see why I sent the letter to Kanchi? Nandini asked and the sight of the poor man penetrated his heart. Even if you don't know anything, yes it seems. The young warrior muttered. Natha. This Chola empire has spread so much today because of the great heroic deeds done by them and their ancestors. The eyes of this sinner will not sleep day or night until they see themselves mounted on the golden throne of Tanjay Purai for one day. If in the meantime they suspect me in any way, they will wear me. Cut him to death in one fell swoop, said Nandini. My dear. Do not torture me with such harsh language, said the great reaper.